Hi, I'm Chris, and I want to show you how to do uh, color correction in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is tailored to the DJI Mavic Pro. However, um, everything I'm going to teach you can really be used um, for any clips, DSLR, whatever you're shooting with. Um, so let's get to it. Okay, so before we hop into Premiere, there's just two quick things I want to highlight about your camera settings that's going to set you up for success when actually correcting. Um, the first is to set your camera into the art mode at negative 1 and negative 3, negative 3. This is just basically going to lower the sharpness, the contrast, and the saturation in the camera, which then allows you more flexibility when you're editing, aka Premiere, Final Cut, whatever you're going to be using. Um, the second thing is to turn on the histogram. This is going to have a little graph. It's going to look like a couple of little humps and peaks. And this just allows you to get your exposure right. You're going to want it roughly in the middle. The closer you can get it to the middle, um, the better. Um, it's less headaches when you're editing. So, yeah, let's hop in Premiere. Okay, so my basic um, setup for doing color correction is adding four things uh, to a clip, which is going to be brightness and contrast, a fast color corrector, sharpen, and a three-way color corrector. Um, to get these effects, you want to go down to your effects panel right here, and they're going to be in the video effects. Um, in the color correction, it's where you find brightness and contrast, fast color corrector, as well as in blur and sharpen, you'll find sharpen. Another way you can look is just typing in, um, so like color, and you'll find them to pop up that way. Um, when you want one, you can just click and drag and add it to your clip like that. Okay, so the first effect that I like to um, start with is the brightness and contrast. So here's the picture with it um, turned off, and here's with it on. So I have it set to 2 and 11.5, and the way that I kind of get this is you can trust your eye um, a little bit to an extent to kind of um, even it out. You want to add some more depth, obviously, right? Um, but the best way to kind of go about this, and the most strategic, is using what's called the YC waveform. Um, and when you click on that, so quick explanation of this, zero is black and 100 is white. Um, and ideally you want to be kind of getting close to the bottom range here of zero and reaching it up to 100 at the top for your whole picture. Um, so when I turn it off, um, you can see we have a lot of... Uh, colored in the mid, which is great, but we want to kind of um, extend the reach of that. So by turning on and kind of raising the brightness and the contrast, we do get that reach, which is what you're looking for. Um, and the, the way to read this graph is this is the left side of your image, here's the center, and here's um, the right side. So we have our brightest points up here in the top mid, and your darkest parts are the bottom right. So just kind of go and highlight that. So here's your brightest area right in the center of the image, and your darkest, your, you got your, all your shadows here and down here. Um, the second thing that I like to do after the brightness and contrast is what's called a fast color corrector. Um, so I'll turn this on real quick just so you can see the difference. Um, and what I mainly use this for is for the white balance right here, as well as some saturation. So first off, the white balance. Um, the easiest way to kind of use this is click on the little droplet, and you want to look for a part of your image that you know is white or what you think white should be. So I'm going to use just this boat here as an example. Boom, and right there, it kind of brings this out. It's going to be pretty minimal for the most part. Um, if you don't want to use this eye droplet, you can also kind of use this color wheel. This is the same way. And you'll immediately see it's kind of changing the hue a lot. Hue a lot, sorry. The closer you get to the center, the less of effect it's going to be. You're still going to have that color. So the greens, the pinks. Um, but the closer you get, it's going to be less saturation as opposed to if you're way outside like that. So we're good with that. Second thing we like to do, since we took out the saturation while shooting the footage, we need to add it back in. So the base of this, when you first open it up, the number is going to be at 100. Um, so we need to add some back in. So I like to go around 150 or 160, depending on what it calls for. I'll put it to 150 for right now. Okay, so after setting the fast color corrector, I move right into the three-way color corrector. And the way this one differentiates itself from the fast color corrector is that it gives you an ability to set the white balance and saturation for specific images or for specific parts of your image. So the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. Um, we set this the same way as we did for the fast color corrector, um, which is by taking that little eye droplet and moving to that part of the image um, that corresponds. So for the highlights, I'm going to go way up here. For the midtones, I'm going to go mm, like around the sandbar. And the shadows, I'm going to go down here by that bow. Right, so that's a quick and dirty way to kind of set this up, and it's going to give you a pretty natural look. Now, since we took the saturation out of the image when you shot it originally, we need to add it back in, right? So I'll set this as a baseline of 150, and I'll go for 125 on each of these. 
and that can kind of give you some room to play with and tweak around. So that's pretty solid. I think I want to bring up this little part and this right here. So that's the highlights. So I'm going to bring that up to like 135. And yeah, that's a good, uh, good place to go with. Okay, so the way I just showed you um, was with the eye droplets. And a second way to do this, it's a it takes a little bit more time and it's going to take a lot more um, kind of just getting used to the program and finding out what you personally like. But it's to actually use these color wheels and mainly set the balance. So um, you can kind of just drag these around as I've shown previously, and it's really going to add a lot of hue to your image. So since this was a sunset, I wanted something a little bit warmer. Um, so what I did is I actually set it up in this kind of reds and pinks, kind of bring out some warmth. Um, the shadows, I kind of cooled down a little bit for some contrast, and it's just going to take some time to play with. Um, you'll find some areas like, you know, like the green doesn't look good, right? Or like up in the red, it's like a little, it's kind of flat. So, I, you know, I brought it down with the blues, um, kind of opposed um, the warm region in the mid-tones and the highlights. Um, so don't be afraid to mess around with that. So the last thing that I like to add is just to sharpen. Um, so here's the on, and it's really simple. Um, it goes from 0 to 100, but I like to keep it anywhere between the 5 to 15 range. Um, it just adds a little crispness to the image, especially since we shot um, with the sharpen less in the Mavic. Um, we want to add a little bit back in post. Um, so there's just 10 there. And I'll show um, the image right now with everything off. All right, so that's our flat image. And then when we add all these back in, Boom, that's the final product. All right, and I'm going to play the entire clip um, edited right here. Again, if you have any other questions or comments um, about the process, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I'll check them out. All right, have a good one. I saw this girl, asked her if she like it like that. Uh, Not a head, yes, therefore I didn't stress. Let my beat keep knocking, cause we rockin' like